Hi everyone, in this short video, we're gonna be looking at the nephron and I want you to be able to draw it out. Um, if you could draw it out, then you'll have more of like a linear picture in your head. Um, and we are gonna draw it in more of a linear manner. Understand that it really in the kidney is not like this, but at least you'll have a flow in your mind. So let's, let's see if I can change the color here. We'll make the pen color red at first. So let's say we have a larger diameter afferent arterial coming in to this capillary system we'll call the glomerulus. And then we'll have a much thinner diameter efferent arterial this way. So we have an afferent arterial we have a, I'll put a G here for glomerulus, that's that. And then we'll put an efferent, an E, an efferent arterial here. So blood is coming in this way and is going through the glomerulus and all the impurities are trying to be pulled out and whatever, whatever is clean and ready to return back to general circulation will exit that glomerulus and come back into general circulation through the efferent arterial. So now let me change the color to, let's say black. Surrounding the glomerulus is this capsule called Bowman's capsule. Okay. So the black right here, we will call it BC for Bowman's capsule. So my hand here is Bowman's capsule and it's holding my fist, which would be the glomerulus, the capillary system. Okay, you can kind of get that image. Now let's change the pen color again. Let's make this, uh, let's make it, blue. Then we have this proximal convoluted tubule. And let's change it again. Then after the proximal convoluted tubule, we're gonna have this and I'm drawing this distinctly. So this right here on the inside, right? Going in this direction, that's the loop of Henley. So we'll do loop of Henley, but there, remember filtrate is moving down in this direction and then it's coming around and then it's going up in this direction. So we have a descending limb of the loop of Henley. And the descending limb, this descending limb is thick compared to the thinner ascending limb of the loop of Henley. And this is like the thinner part. And there's different types of epithelial cells that are found in the Bowman's capsule. There's different types of epithelial cells found in the proximal convoluted tubule. There's different types of epithelial cells in the loop of Henle, comparing descending limb to ascending limb. And then there's different types of epithelial cells that we have here at the distal convoluted tubule. So we have a proximal convoluted tubule and a distal convoluted tubule. And again, the epithelial cells are different here. So there's going to be 
different types of things that are passing through from filtrate into blood or from blood into filtrate based on the thickness of the epithelium, how many layers there are, the size, right? Certain things can diffuse more easily than others. So each region is specific to allow the diffusion, passive diffusion or active diffusion, or if you think back to uh, sim porters or anti porters where two things can pass together if they're sim porters or anti porters, one goes in, one goes out, all these are relevant here. And then let me change one more color. We'll make this, let's say we'll make this, um, let's make it magenta. And then we have collecting duct. So right here, this is going to be the collecting duct. And the collecting duct has many connecting ducts. These are connecting ducts. Connecting ducts can find a way to lead into the collecting duct. And then this is the collecting duct that would lead right, that would be the papilla, right, which is kind of like, let's say, there's the renal pyramid, and then that would be the papilla, and then it kind of leads into the minor callus, and then there'd be another one, another pyramid with another kind of minor calyx that lead into a major calyx. So this is kind of like the general idea so let's review. We have an afferent arterial that leads into the glomerulus. And then I just want to take out, let's say I show you, let's say I'm going to take out a certain part of that glomerulus. So let's say this is part of the glomerulus. There's going to be a type of cell that wraps around it called a podocyte. And think of it as kind of like the podocyte would be like the palm of my hand. And then it creates these slits, these filtration slits between my fingers, and they're very thin and it only allows certain things to pass through. So there's gonna be these very small and very thin uh, extensions of the podocytes create called these uh, fenestrations or filtration slits. And it's gonna allow certain things to pass through and move into the Bowman's capsule into these tubules. That's the tubular system, the proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle and distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. And what is going to surround this, we are going to have, we'll make this red. So let's say all around here and all around here, there's gonna be the peritubular capillaries. And then around here, the loop, there's gonna be another type of system that's called the vasa recta. That kind of has more of like a linear type of vasculature to it, vasa recta. And at these different parts of the nephron, the Epithelial cells are different, whether they're squamous cells, columnar cells, whether they're simple, stratified, um, and it will allow the diffusion of certain things depending on certain hormones, right? Like at the distal convoluted tubule, that's where parathyroid hormone is going to work. And then the loop of Henle, if you've known people that have had blood pressure issues, you have people that are on loop diuretics like Lasix. Lasix is a diuretic that is 
going to pull water out of the system and allow, like if people have swollen ankles and they say they're retaining water, they're going to want them to urinate that out. So they give them a diuretic, not an anti-diuretic, but a diuretic to allow them to lose more water. And that becomes a problem because remember, wherever water goes, minerals follow and you will lose potassium. You will lose magnesium. And this becomes real serious because we need these potassium, magnesium, we need these for electrolytes and to help conduction of the heart where there are people that will actually die instantaneously without warning from what's called ventricular ectopy, where the heart just starts beating because potassium was lost and magnesium followed. So they they saw that, all right, maybe we can create these potassium sparing diuretics. And we don't wanna lose potassium because other minerals will be lost at the same time. So they created a, a other diuretics that are called potassium sparing. So you wouldn't lose magnesium and all other minerals. And they're just not as effective. Um, I think one of them is called like spirolactone. Um, they did find some benefit with it with women who were losing hair. They found that endocrinologists were using it and women were regrowing hair. So they found some other benefit, but it is not very effective as a, uh, to, to lower uh, blood pressure as, as they thought, the potassium sparing ones. Um, so the, the loop diuretics, they're called loop diuretics because they pull out a lot of water from here, from the loop of Henley. And then from the collecting duct, right here is where the majority of anti-diuretic hormone ADH is going to work, which is opposite from a diuretic. Anti-diuretic is gonna say, hey, we're gonna hold on to water. So it's gonna pull water back into circulation. That's an anti-diuretic. Um, we're gonna have aldosterone work here as well at the distal convoluted tubule. And we're gonna go over some of the hormones in, a, in another slide, but this is some of the, the basics. So a lot of calcium regulation takes place at the distal convoluted tubule. A lot of the water regulation through antidiuretic hormone is gonna take place at the collecting duct. Um, aldosterone is gonna work also at the distal convoluted tubule. Lasix and your diuretics are gonna work here at the, the loop of Henley. So we went over the PCT, the proximal convoluted tubule. We went over the loop of Henle. The proximal convoluted tubule, that's the segment that's closest to the Bowman's capsule or the renal corpuscle, and it's located in the cortex, whereas the loop of Henle, that's the U-shaped tube that I showed you, and that extends into the medulla. And then the distal convoluted tubule is also found primarily uh, in the cortex. The filtrate, is traveling in the tubules. Now it's called tubular fluid. And each nephron will eventually empty into what we showed you as the collecting duct or the collecting system, okay? The collecting duct is gonna receive fluid from many nephrons. That's why I had many connecting ducts leading into the collecting duct. So it begins in the cortex and it descends uh, into the medulla and it carries fluid to the papillary duct, which drains into the minor calyx. So remember, there's your pyramid, here's the papillary duct, and then it opens up into the minor calyx. And then over here, maybe there's another pyramid, there's the renal column, there's the papillary duct, and then another minor calyx. And then those will, find its way into this, which is now the major calyx. So remember that, that flow, let's take a look at it. You got the afferent arterial, which comes off the cortical radiate artery into the glomerulus, into that glomerular capsular space, right? That Bowman's capsule. Then from the Bowman's capsule, you have the proximal convoluted tubule. Then you have the loop of Henley, remember that loop has a descending limb, and then it has an ascending limb, and it's a thick descending limb and then the thin ascending limb. Then you have your distal convoluted tubule that leads into the collecting tubule, eventually into the collecting duct. 
from the collecting duct into the papillary duct, minor calyx, major calyx, renal pelvis, ureter. Pretty straight flow, but good to look at a picture when you're looking at this at the same time. So now what ends up happening is, remember I drew it out in a similar way as this, right? It, this one's going the opposite way. So we say, we can see that we have the Bowman's capsule and here they're calling it glomerular capsule. We have the glomerulus, which is that capillary system in between. One of these coming in is the afferent arteriole. One of these coming out is the efferent arteriole. Then we have the proximal convoluted tubule and it is very convoluted. Here's the loop of Henle. And then we have the uh, distal convoluted tubule. Now, what I wanna point out to you is, let me see if I can erase this. Um, okay, now this distal convoluted tubule is very convoluted and it's gonna find its way, way back in here. And it's gonna pass close to the Bowman's capsule again, adjacent to the afferent and efferent arterial. Just keep that in mind. Don't want you to be confused. Um, and some students do confuse this a little bit, especially on the lab portion where they're looking at this model and they see a tubule just next to the Bowman's capsule and go, well, it's gotta be proximal. Well, it's proximal if it's continuous with that Bowman's capsule. But here you see that it's just not connecting, it's just adjacent to, which tells us it's distal. And the reason why that's important is we're gonna take a closer look at this in a little bit. This is where we have the juxto glomerular cells. And the juxta glomerular cells are composed of the macula densa cells and some other uh, granular cells that have that act as like chemoreceptors and mechanoreceptors that react to the chemical composition of the filtrate as well as the pressure uh, of what's happening in the blood and what's happening in the filtrate. And a lot can happen here to regulate uh, the amount of flow of blood into the system. So the glomerulus is a mass of capillaries that's fed by the afferent arterial and drains into the efferent arterial. We've done that. The glomerular capsule, it's also known as the Bowman's capsule, has a visceral layer of podocytes. Hopefully that's familiar, the podocytes. Let's say, um, let's say this is part of the glomerular um, capillary system. And then above it is a podocyte and then we have these extensions that create these fenestrations or these filtration slits, okay? And here's a pretty good picture of that. So here's the afferent arterial. Here's the efferent arterial. We see the afferent is much larger in diameter. The efferent is thinner. So we have lots of blood coming in pretty quickly into the glomerulus and less blood leaving. So it creates this glomerular filtration rate that's just perfect where it stays in here a little bit longer to pull out some of the impurities through um, these filtration slits, right? We start to see that we have these pedicels off of the podocyte and it creates these little slits and the filtrate is now pulled out into the first part of the proximal convoluted tubule. And we see that we have cuboidal cells here. These are simple, they're one cell layer, simple cuboidal cells. Now here's, I want you to pay close attention to this and really get this. So here we have an afferent arterial, blood's coming in through here and then exiting this way through the efferent arterial. This is just a little opposite compared to the, the, the other pictures, but the concept is the same. Here's the glomerular capillary system. And now what we can see is we start to see these podocytes superficial to it with all of these filtration slits. And that allows for this small stuff to exit Right? We don't want red blood cells passing through there. We don't want protein. We don't want albumin. 
you know, we just want maybe some glucose, some water, some vitamins, some minerals to pass through. And here's the beginning of the proximal convoluted tubule. Then you have the loop of Henle and then the distal convoluted tubule. Now look what happens. The distal convoluted tubule is wrapping around and here, right there is the distal convoluted tubule that we see budding up right up against and next to and adjacent to the afferent nefferent arterial. So this area and this region right here is what we call the juxtaglomerular apparatus. These cells that line the distal convoluted tubule, they're called macula densa cells. And then a little bit deeper surrounding this between the afferent and efferent arterial, we're gonna have these JG cells, the juxtaglomerular cells. But together, those two make up the JG complex, the juxtaglomerular complex. And these have the ability of releasing like renin or erythropoietin to help either regulate blood pressure or produce more red blood cells. So the juxtaglomerular complex, I'm gonna actually stop here and then we'll come back and create another video just on the JG complex, okay?